Hello everyone, we're here at the Wine Access Experience. My name is Eduardo Dingler, um, Vice President of Wine of Wine Access. And today we have a pretty awesome conversation with a, a great guy that's born and bred in the Napa Valley. No need for introduction. And uh... Josh, we're all waiting for you. Hey dude. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, how about you? I'm great. Great, great. Where are you these days? I am in Newport Beach right now. I literally just drove down today and just arrived to deliver uh -huh. a 15-liter bottle to one of my favorite customers. Awesome. That's a, a great excuse to take a little road trip. Uh, yeah. Did you take the Bronco? No. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a little bold. But uh, if anybody knows right Josh, right. you see him around town in this beautiful Bronco that uh, is definitely... It's a synonym of you now, this day. Every time I see a Bronco, I just immediately think about this. But uh, hey, let's raise the glass to you and everything you've done. And thanks for joining us, even though you're on a road trip. Cheers. And, oh, there you go. A man of, of many beverages. I'm having a, <laughs> I do uh, gotta say, a margarita. You throw some mean parties, uh, not only here, but uh, at, uh, at certain uh, events. Um, what's the, uh, the festival that I'm thinking of, Aspen? Definitely, people know you for those parties. Oh, Aspen Food and Wine. Oh, man. I've had some fun Next ones. This year, but that's definitely an event. And your parties are some not to be missed, right? Awesome. Definitely. What are you drinking, Margarita? Yeah, I'm having, um, we just stopped at, you know, High Times, the wine store in Orange County? Oh, absolutely. So I was delivering a bottle to my buddy Dan there. And we got some, uh, some mezcal. Beautiful. And then some of Tommy's Margarita mix from Tommy's Joint in San Francisco. Amazing. I mean, Tommy's. And actually, funny enough, yesterday was Who River Beckham's birthday from Tommy's. Uh, which oh, nice. Great, great glass to him. I know you're a huge margarita fan, so that's, yeah. that's Love a good gift right there. Man. Well, thanks for joining us. Let's talk a little bit. I know there's many, many people that uh, are intrigued about you and, and your project, and myself included, and as much as we've hung out over the years and learned, there's something new out there you're just leave every time. So. What projects are you working on right now? Um, right now, I'm, I'm pretty focused on Grounded Wine Company, which is super exciting time for us. It's, it's a weird, you know, COVID, this whole thing's been weird. But um, I started the company about three years ago almost. We've had wines in market for just over two years. And uh, we're making wines from Napa, um, all over California, and a little bit in Washington and Oregon as well. And, uh, one, right? you know, Oregon that's kind of... What's that? Some of the newest uh, vineyards you acquired uh, it's put from uh, out, out of California. Yeah, sorry, I, I had trouble hearing you on that one. No, that's sure. okay. So yeah, because last time we talked, uh, you were just venturing into the uh, Oregon and, and Washington landscape, which is pretty exciting. Exactly. Um, and what yeah, are you searching so, from there? Let me see if I can put on these headphones and this helps. I'm having trouble. I'm sorry about that. Oh, yeah. In the meantime, like, a quick know. second to hydrate for everybody. <laughs> All right. Hold on one sec. Let's see if these pop on. Be... If everybody just joined us, we're, we're that... here with Josh Phelps from uh, Grounded Wine Company and uh, many, many other endeavors over the years. And uh, your dad, Chris Phelps, is a huge synonym of, of uh, it's iconic in the valley, right? Yeah, no. So, do you want me to kind of give you a little rundown on on my background? Please, I and, think yeah, we're all dying to hear a little. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I grew up in Napa Valley. I was about to say here, but I'm in Southern California. But I grew up in Napa Valley, and it was fortunate to grow up with a dad who um, has made wine my whole life. But he's, I think, he's going on his. I'm 34. I think he's going on his like 37th harvest, maybe, maybe 38. Um, so he started his career after college. He went to the University of Bordeaux and, and long story short, um, was introduced to Christian Moex, um, spent time with Moex at a couple of his properties, including Petrus. Uh, and then, you know, went on to be the founding winemaker of Dominus and made Camus for a long time. Uh, and has worked on a lot of Napa projects. So I kind of, you know, had the, um, the luxury and the, the privilege to grow up learning from somebody that was making you know, higher end 
wines, mostly from Napa, but he had experience in France too. And for me, you know, I, I didn't have an interest <clears throat> necessarily in wine from a young age. I would say that I, you know, I, we drank it around the dinner table. It was part of life, but it wasn't until later in college that I really fell in love with wine. I actually got to go to Bordeaux for the first time. My family, and that was really a kind of a special experience. And uh, I felt like I kind of got into wine. I witnessed the lifestyle around it and, and uh, it became something that I was really passionate about. So I was just getting out of college at that time and uh, started, ended up starting my first company, Taken Wine Company, as a senior project. And it became huge. And a lot of people know you because of that. I mean, it, it, yeah, that, that was really, that was super fun. It, it was really, and, and that was always kind of in the more affordable side. And I, you know, I worked for Joel Gott briefly after college too. He's been a friend and mentor. And I, I guess I, I was lucky to kind of get exposed to the, the more affordable side because I really do enjoy making wines that I can reach a lot of people and share with people versus, you know, a really small production wine from Napa or elsewhere. And and my dad and I still do make a wine together at Vivum, which, you know, and I know we make 500 cases of, of, you know, special Yonville Cabernet that, that we have a lot of fun doing, but, um, you know, it's fun making affordable wine that, that lots of people get to enjoy. And it's fun getting to work with uh, these different regions. I mean, I, I, that's, so, it's, as far as the regions, tell us a little bit about your process of how you come across these vineyards. How you, you look at them? How do you ambition them? Yeah, you know, it, it kind of started. I, I can't really tell you exactly why we started making wine in Washington and Oregon and these other places. It just kind of happened. And it was my dad and I work on this winemaking together. I mean, he, he's kind of the consulting winemaker for my project. And so it, it started, you know, I think when we started Grounded, prices in Napa Valley were really quite high a few years ago. They, they've, they've, they're balancing a little bit right now and we're able to make slightly more affordable Cabernet Sauvignon in Napa. But I, I ended up kind of being attracted to Eastern Washington for more affordable Cabernet. And same with Oregon, um, for Pinot Noir. And I also really think stylistically there's an elegance and, and beauty to those wines that are just different. And it's fun. Um, it's fun to do that. And so, you know, all of, for us, it's, it's all about, you know, who, you know, and, and these friends that we've had in the business for a long time. So our, you know, we're making wine with friends in Washington and Oregon, and that's how we're sourcing grapes and we're making wine at facilities where we know the people. And that, that's what really makes us um, fun. I mean, for me, People always ask, you know, like, why are you making wine in these different regions? Or what's your favorite part about making wine in these different regions? And it's really the people. It's being, you know, I get to go to Paso and be a part of the winemaking community there. I get to go to Washington and be a part of the wine community, community there. And as you know, living in Napa, you know, wine communities are great communities. And, and uh, that's very a super unique. fun thing. Yeah. Certainly. So tell me a little bit on, on the Grounder project. Um, do you have, uh, as you alluded a little bit, do you have facilities you make the wine at? You don't truck the fruit and make it centralized yourself. No, we, we operate out of four facilities, one in Eastern Washington, one in um, Willamette Valley, Oregon, one in Napa Valley, and one on the Central Coast in San Luis Obispo. Wow. So everything is crushed, um, processed, and bottled in those locations. Everything starts to finish. And yeah. uh, tell me a little bit about the, uh, I, I love the, the public radio. You were talking to us last time about the story on how that name came up. Yeah, you guys, I appreciate your support with that wine. That's kind of, out of all our wines, that's the smallest, um, I don't know, kind of like Rand, you know, we, we kind of stick to tr traditional varietals for the most part. And, and Grenache, um, I love Grenache, you know, I love Grenache from the Southern Rhone and, um, and from California. And, and uh, I found a couple of these vineyards in West Paso. Um, one of them is the Adelaida Vineyard and one's called Terabella. It's, it's down the road. They're both in the Adelaida district. And, and it's just been fun to make this um, kind of, I, I think of this one, that wine is being a little more elegant than a lot of Paso wines. We try to, you know, make it a little lighter on its feet and um, public radio, the first form of communication, all of our um, naming is kind of this fun Americana throwback, very American vibe. And um, my grandfather was a, my dad's dad, who we lost recently was a, um, amateur radio geek. So his call sign I put on the front bot front of that bottle just kind of is a little nod to him. Um, but yeah, we co-ferment those grapes together. So it's 90% Grenache, 10% Syrah and open top tanks. And then that ages in neutral oak punchins, French punchins. So you, you don't get a lot of, you know, it's really just like vibrant. It, it really exp expresses Grenache, you know? Do you, I mean, you spend a lot of time in this region. 
what do you see, for instance, in uh, in Paso? Do you see the movement going towards more restraint overall, or do you, do you still see the, the big muscle? I think, pa yeah, Paso, a lot of the big names of Paso, and, and um, yeah, there's a time and a place for all kinds of wine, you know? I, I, I think that wine is something that, you know, everyone has their own style of what they enjoy and every region expresses something differently. And I think Paso does a really nice job of expressing those big wines. I, you know, I look up to some of those guys there. I love Eric over at Booker and um, the, the guys at Lena Colado and some of these, these really kind of special brands in Paso that are, they're definitely bigger, more opulent wines, but I think they're really balanced and well-made because that region is a really warm region that commands that for me personally, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to kind of make a, I'd say like a balanced style, a um, little lighter wine from there, but it's still a modern, it's still 14.2% alcohol. It's still a, oh, a, a modern style wine. Right? Yeah. 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 You, you want to pick an opti optimal ripeness, just like you would anywhere. So. Exactly. But, but at the end of the day, you're putting a little more focus on the, yeah. on the structure. Rather than a little more For sure. And how about your, your Washington state project? Washington's a um, Washington. So that's called collusion. Um, Washington's been interesting. You know, before I started making wine in Washington, I honestly felt like I kind of wrote off that region in a way, not wrote it off, but I never enjoyed many wines from that region. And um, we had, I had a friend doing a project up there and I got drawn up there. And what I was intrigued by was the, you know, the price, the average price per ton for Cabernet Sauvignon that could be organically farmed, well farmed, cab that's like under three thousand dollars a ton and the fact that you could make kind of a more red fruit driven um i don't want to say lighter but just like a fresh style cabernet sauvignon mm -hmm. um and i could charge 20 bucks a bottle for it and um so i thought that was interesting and, and that's been an interesting one it's it's i'm not a wash i'm not from washington i'm not a washington winemaker so um you know would you have had an insight over the years and you've infiltrated yeah that? yeah and we're learning up there. Like I love Malbec up there. We, we include a bit of Malbec in the wine because I think it adds this lushness and the kind of just a little more bl black fruit um, tone to the wine. Um, so we're kind of learning what we like. We're sourcing from mostly Red Mountain and Horse Heaven Hills. Um, wow. We're all, all from those areas. And so we're kind of figuring it out. We, we make wine at a winery called Double Canyon up there that's owned by Crimson. And we're good friends with them. So it's, it's been a nice, nice partnership. As much as a lot of people that are watching right now or will watch this uh, followers, they uh, we we're kind of in a in a realm of Washington where we wish it had more potential and or obviously it has the potential but more exposure and more or uh, ways to to enjoy it more often. Can you tell us a couple of your favorite producers out there, like some up and coming or something? That, that yeah, I I wish I was a little more versed. I I do think Double Canyon where we make the wine is like. They're, they're doing some really nice stuff and the wines aren't, I don't see them out there a ton, but they're, they're doing a nice job. The wines are balanced. The wines are affordable. Um, you know, you've kind of got, there, there's some, some bigger players. Um, what's the name of the, the winery that like Philippe Melka and all those guys are consulting for oh, up there? Uh, Long Shadows. Long That's Shadows. actually, Long Shadows is actually a really cool product project. We, we thought about making the wine there and as a customer crush facility and we checked out that and really was interesting to taste the whole breadth of everything they were doing. I think it said a lot about Washington because you had about six, I mean, you had Philippe Melka, Michelle Roland and um, Mike Dunn maybe. And like, or, or, it was just this crazy um, a lot of heavy hitters, yeah. breadth of different, different types of winemakers doing these projects. So that was cool. I always give a nod to Charles Smith um, mm -hmm. because I think that, you know, he makes these big, big monster wines, but um, he's done a great job of promoting that region truly, as you've seen by the way he's sold his brands um, and a great job of branding Washington. And so I always kind of give a nod to him. I, I from a business standpoint, I respect what uh, Charles does up there. Absolutely. And uh, heading into the Oregon uh, landscape, what, what are some of the varietals you're playing with? Oregon, just Pinot right now. Um, and when I, when I own Taken, I, you know, as the brand grew, I kind of found myself a little bit like unengaged during harvest time because it was just bigger production and I wasn't like in the cellar as much. And um, I found myself going up to Oregon during harvest to, to kind of work for my friend, Nicholas Keeler, who's a really good buddy. He owns a brand called Authentique. And, uh, and so I went up there and would just kind of like work harvest for him for a week or two. And 
really fell in love with the area and the wines and the people. And um, so that, that project started because I ended up buying 40 tons of fruit from four vineyards, um, mainly his vineyard, which is called Keeler Estate. They board, it's an organic biodynamic vineyard that borders Antica Terra. Uh -huh. and, uh, and we started making wine up there. So that wine comes from organic grapes for the most part. It, um, it's very like pure in style. It's very no new oak, open top fermentation, some whole cluster carbonic. So it's very like, it, it reminds me of Beaujolais, but it's, it's like just fresh in your face, lots of fruit. Uh -huh. really, that's a really, really fun wine. I don't know if you've had that one. But I don't think I um, have. I, I, it's a great excuse to socially yeah. distance and try some when you're back. We'll, we'll do that. You, you'll really dig it. And I'll show you what we're doing up there in these next years. Cause working Nicholas is our kind of day to day guy up there. And uh -huh. it's been, we've had a blast working together. His style, we couldn't be more different. I'm like contemporary Napa guy. He is like full on natural winemaker in uh, Oregon. Uh, making so like, you're kind of. Yeah. So it started as a joke where he'd have like a tank and it said like hundred percent carbonic and he'd text me the picture. And I'm like, dude, what, what are you, what? <laughs> no. but, but, uh, but the results of what we did together has been pretty spectacular. And, and that's, you know, a 20, $25 wine. And, um, I think it, 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 there's a lot, a lot of bang for the buck with that. And it's just a, a great bottle of Pinot Noir. Absolutely. I love the fact that you're really focusing on, on, as you mentioned, I'm resonating with what you mentioned earlier. It's, it's wine for the people. It's wine that is attainable. And I know recently, and congratulations, you've gotten a lot of uh, exposure with some uh, bigger companies promoting your wines. Yeah. And that's, that's incredible. That's, uh, it really puts it in front of everyone. And yeah. you're bringing little pieces of these different regions into yeah. everybody's table and it's everyday wines, which is, it's pretty incredible. On the white wine side, I know you make a rosé on the chilled side, but do you, are you playing with any whites right now? Right now, so we do have a brand called Grounded by Josh Phelps. I'm gonna have to like grab a plug in a second. I'm sorry, it's yes, been a hectic, 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 <laughs> hectic, travel, hectic travel day, but uh, <laughs> we started a brand called Grounded by Josh Phelps that's basically our entry level, really kind of like what my intent was with this company um, to start with. and. We make, these are California appellated wines, but my dad mm -hmm. and I are making a, a Cabernet that came from Napa, Sonoma, and Paso, so California. Wow. And then, and then the um, Sauvignon Blanc came from um, uh, uh, Monterey and Santa Barbara, sorry. And, wow. and so those wines retail for $14.99. Um, mm -hmm. We had a one-year retail exclusive with Target. Okay. <laughs> which was really cool. And now we're rolling those out nationally. And... Um, so that's the only other, the only white we're making right now. We'll, we'll, we'll do some other white, but um, yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. I kind of did this with my last company. I love white wine. I, uh -huh. I probably drink in a lot of ways. I probably drink more white than red. A lot of the time. I, I feel like this it's... time of year, I live, <laughs> I, I live off of white burgundy and champagne. Right. And uh, any, any plans on venturing out to other regions, uh, perhaps uh, across the pond or something like that on your brand? I don't think, I don't think with this project, but I mean, maybe someday. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, it only makes sense, right? I mean, you're so well connected. You know the vineyards, you know the people. If not, you get to know them, make it a point. Yeah. So, hey, that's a great excuse. Like, maybe uh, we see a grounded champagne. I have things that I'd like to do someday. But we'll, <laughs> Imagine. Imagine. We'll we love to follow all your, your I, I, just, I, I was just in high time. We just got to Newport Beach, and I'm like, drop this 15 liter off at high times, and I walk into their champagne cellar. They probably have like... Oh, that is, that is definitely a place to be. It's an absolute... Disaster. I, I walked in and I grabbed one bottle for dinner tonight, but I, I was like, I'll come back when I have a moment like tomorrow. Cause oh, you, was, you, leave, you need an hour to, to hang yeah, out it was, there. And, it was, it was pretty see. crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and when are, are, what's your, what have you been up to when, during this, this whole pandemic? Like, I know you've been something that's amazing for us locals is you've been doing some uh, margarita runs and yeah. <laughs> bringing uh, margaritas Try and keeping everybody hydrated. Yeah, we were trying to help out our friends at Grand Electrica and Napa during shelter in place. It's been, you know, yeah, try to support everybody that we can, try to help the restaurants. I've been lucky. I've been lucky to live in Napa Valley. I mountain bike a lot. I, I can do a lot of outdoor activities that you necessarily can't necessarily do everywhere. Um, but we've been busy. Our, you know, the company has been busy. It's it's a slim team. It's it's it's. There's only a few of us running it. So. I, I've been busier than ever. I mean, running retail and mm -hmm. just kind of making sure that, that we're, um, and then using this time to like be innovative and, and working with our team to, to innovate on new ideas, innovate on packaging, innovate on what's uh -huh. next, you know, and, and kind of getting to like, everyone can relax a little bit and say, okay, let's like focus on some stuff that we, that we've been wanting to focus on. So we're blessed to, to be, I mean, I, obviously you and I are both lucky that we're employed and that we're, you know, 
that we're working right now and we're working hard and there's a lot going on in our worlds and, and that's uh, something to be grateful for, for sure. Absolutely. And I know for uh, you've been supporting uh, restaurants as well, like aside from Grand Electrica, like Press, you guys did a big uh, event there with them. We did some stuff at Press. We've done some stuff with Charter Oak. We've done, you know, we, we did have support. Uh, we made some wine, especially for Cook, for their employee fund. Nice. So, you know, try to support the people that support us. I mean, that's yeah. that's kind of what, what you need to do right now. And um, yeah, those, people are, those people are our friends and our business partners, you know? Yeah. No, I mean, definitely would raise a glass to everybody in the restaurant industry that, that keeps sure. us all fed and <laughs> keeps the, the whole thing going. We're very lucky, as you said, to live in the, in the Napa Valley and and experience this and uh, firsthand and try and, but hey, I want to raise a big glass to you and the whole team and y you continue to make amazing wines and sharing them with us. We're very lucky to, to have Thank uh, you. some insight into your, your world and be able to share it with our members and everybody. That Thanks. Thanks, that Eduardo. Us. Yeah, we love you guys and uh, appreciate having you as a partner and uh, look forward to sharing some Oregon Pinot when I get back. I cannot wait. You let us know and uh, we'll do a Maybe we'll we'll do a live stream while we're while we share the next stuff when you're back Let's in town. Let's do it. Hey, All right. cheers to you, sir. Cheers, Thanks for cheers, joining brother. Us. Thank Enjoy. you. Thanks everyone for watching. Cheers. Cheers, guys.